All right, our next guest is the founder of the Internet of Things podcast with Kevin Tofel and a freelance writer for Fortune and other places on the web also. She is an Amazon Echo savant, if I might say so. Welcome, Stacey Higginbotham. Hi. I, I love being a savant because the word right before that is idiot. Uh, <laughs> So I'm like, oh, great intro. No, Amazon Echo, Savant. <laughs> right. Straight up, straight up Savant. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> uh, so I always have so many questions for you about all my internets of things, but let's start with the Eero. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It was released la last week. It's a new way to blanket your home with fast, reliable Wi-Fi. Uh, I want it. Should I get it? It depends on your house. I love it. Um, I wanted it. And I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> But it's really expensive. So that's my big caveat. Mm. And for the price, I feel like it should do more. But because it is like internet connected and it was designed to be updated like all the time, it will it will get better, just like the Amazon Echo does. So I would say yes, do what? it, especially if you have a big house. $499 for the three pack, $199 for an individual one. I know my house, like if you're in the living room, the dining room, you got great internet. Anywhere else in the house, it, it drops off a cliff. Um, yeah, so I, I really need something like this, but man, that is expensive. But how, okay, so here's here's the big question, right? Wi-Fi is like, it's like oxygen in your home. Yeah, and I'm true. not I'm not like selling Eros here. I'm a big <laughs> proponent of good bandwidth. <laughs> so I'm like, I have in my house, which is super super skinny and super tall. Uh, it's got a garage with a connected car and a connected garage door opener. I've got my first story, or that would be my second story, and then my third story, and then a rooftop deck with internet-connected devices on it. Wow. So up until Can this- Can I come live with you? Yes, yes, super <laughs> fun. Um, so I've got all of these devices, tall, skinny house, and I had three access points that I had to set up, and that was- that was like $125 to $150 per access point. So that's a lot of money. Yeah. And it was a pain to set up. So I had one Wi-Fi network, right? So that took a lot of pain and effort. It still is a little bit janky. Um, like it it would kick you off the network after it reached a certain device threshold. So if I was testing too many devices, um, you know, if you got on there too late with your computer, it was like, nope, not for you. <laughs> And Eero solved that. And it solved it with me like going around and plugging them in in like five minutes, mm -hmm. which was, I'm going to say, totally worth $500. So the um, is, how does it compare to the OnHub router? Did you try that also? So Kevin tried the OnHub, my colleague and co-host. Co so he tells me, and this is Kevin's, I'm channeling Kevin Tofel. He's so <laughs> much nicer. Imagine longer hair. <laughs> so he tells me that the on hub doesn't cover his whole house. And so he, uh, he really wants me to send him my euros to test in his house before I send them back. <laughs> Little illicit gadget exchange there. Well, I mean, the, on, the promise of the on hub was to uh, deliver us Wi-Fi the way we use it now, right? Like our kids are in one room streaming, you know, video, and then we're in the other room trying to work. And, and do you think the Eero does that? Yes. So doesn't the on, so I'm going to ask, because I think the on hub also troubleshoots a little bit for you. Can't you go in and see like what devices are needing, like what kind of bandwidth or throughput devices need and, or does it automatically fix that for you? I'm channeling Kevin Topol. <laughs> <laughs> He's not telling me. <laughs> so unfortunately I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, I haven't heard a bunch, I haven't heard a lot of people saying like, you've got to get an on hub. And that was, yeah, no, too. I think that the, the on hub promised more than I think it ended up delivering on It had a really good kind of early reaction. And then as people were playing around with it, I think it wasn't quite as, as polished or as, as dialed in as it sounds like this is. I mean, I think this is kind of a trend that we're seeing and it's a welcome trend as far as I'm concerned around technology that's, that's does things that are actually very beneficial. Like we all want to extend Wi-Fi in our home, but does it hopefully without complicating 
the scenario. And like, it's, it's one of the things that's kept me from like going through, uh, other alternative, you know, options for extending Wi-Fi at my home. Cause just in my brain, I'm like, ah, I just don't want to deal with it. And then if something, you know, isn't working and I have to troubleshoot it, you know, that's, I know me, that's going to take me forever to feel like getting around to troubleshooting and making it happen. So if it's truly like a plug and play five minutes, whatever, there's a lot of value and benefit to that. I think so. Those. They're truly, it's totally, so I've been on this kick for like three years and this is like truly a nerdy kick, but I've been saying that the home is going to need enterprise class routers because we've got a lot more devices. They're consuming a lot more bandwidth and we need to like be able to prioritize things. And because we're giving our kids devices at a young age, we want to be able to control their access. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to like go into my, my settings and say, hey, don't let my daughter's computer have access after 8.30. Uh, and the only way to do that for the longest time was to go into your like router settings. So like you dial into like 1.168.192 or whatever it was. And then you'd log in and you'd, you'd hope that you'd have that capability. You didn't always have them. And so what we're seeing with Eero, we see it with like the Torch router that was on Kickstarter. We see it with Luma, which is a security focused router. There's there's just Securify, the OnHub, all of these are coming and they're gonna bring these awesome features down to the home. And I'm super excited. And will they be easy for people to use? Yes, that's the hope. And like OnHub and the Eero have two things that they do that I think is really nice for users. They 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 cross streams. I don't know. They they use both two point four gigahertz and five gigahertz, um, and the user doesn't have to think about it. So you don't have like two networks because most people are like, uh, get on the five G network because that's for video, um, not realizing that it doesn't like travel as far from the router. Mm -hmm. um, so these routers are just like, here have the best network, and it's all under one SSID, which is awesome because that's not complicated at all. What were you gonna say, Ian? I think people don't clean their homes up enough as well. Um, I know certainly a few friends that I've been around to the house and they go, oh, I'm, you know, my, my connection's crap, it's awful. And uh, you know, the, the box that I get from British Telecom doesn't work. And I'm like, well, okay, but it's sat on the floor, it's behind your TV, <laughs> behind your cable box, and you're expecting it to get to the opposite corner of the house. Spend, you know, 30 quid and get yourself a, 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 a cat's... 5e or cat 6 cable and take it up into the the, the attic and then you know this is a, this thing is, is something that delivers its signal in a straight line from wherever it is so put it in the middle of your house or put it in the middle of your roof there's more um uh, there's more issues with when you're expecting a signal to go up through your property because it's got to go through things like microwave ovens when they're running that will knock your signal out and all of that kind of stuff just think logically about where the signal is coming from and going to uh, put the things that, that have got the ability to buffer quite a lot further away and the things that haven't got the ability to buffer quite a lot a lot closer and people can get you know you, you can go out and buy uh, access points and you don't get any better from it and you get frustrated then because you still put them in the same awful positions and that's, that's a good point. So the Eero is, I'm sure you've seen the design, but I'll show you. This is what I replaced it with. Ta-da! <laughs> it's, it's so nice. This is my old access point, um, which, by the way, was totally choking off my bandwidth because it was three years old and it was an 802.11n, not AC. <laughs> so I, I know, I was like, oh, cardinal Wi-Fi mistake. Um, so that was exciting. But then the Eero is like a little bit smaller than that and it's pretty. So now I have these like slightly prettier, smaller white boxes throughout my house that don't have those janky antennas off of them. Right. So yes. that's nice. Nice. Or you could get the nine decibel antennas, get three of those on there and you'll start knocking out everyone's signal for a block. <laughs> in, in drawing power, like mad. <laughs>